We're here in Cartagena. Let's have a look at each of our Amokas in the Ocean Race Europe 2025. Seven state-of-the-art Amokas on the water here in Cartagena. What better opportunity for us to take a look at each of them in turn and have a find, if we can, for those differences, those slightly, those choices that the designers, that the teams have made. They're all following the same design rule, but they've arrived at it from very different places with different philosophies. Each one thinking that maybe they have the winning formula. So let's dive in, but let's start, of course, with the winning boat. Here, closest to us, Biotherm. This is the boat that has been dominating the first half of the Ocean Race Europe 2025. Every leg that they've been in, they've got maximum points. They've got maximum points at every bonus gate as well. And there's something special about this boat. A lot of people saw it coming. Not just people like me, fans or pundits or anyone else, the sailors. The sailors from the other teams. You'd ask them, who do you think is going to win? Well, we're going to win, of course. Okay, who's going to come second? And a lot of them said Biotherm. Now, why? It's a lightweight boat. It's low to the water. It's got minimal superstructure. It's, it's a boat that's been stripped back. And now that's maybe a bit risky if you're pushing things hard in the Southern Ocean, but for these kind of conditions in the Mediterranean, it plays to your favor. The cockpit, it's really nice and open. They can seal it up, but why would you in this heat wave? That older style cockpit is probably a real advantage for the sailors when they're trying to survive in 35 degree heat waves. But also slightly different on the technical front, they've got that traveler that sweeps across the boat and with it, the rope, the cars that slide over, that rope going down, that line is the, the kicker, pulling the boom down, the van pulling the boom down. Then they have the main sheet at the back, which lets the sail go in and out. I mean, each, each boat's doing things a little bit differently, but this one here has chosen that method. What does that mean? Well, it just means if you're gonna sail on this boat, you need to know what tools you have. Let's see how that compares with the other boats that we've got down here. So we're in a perfect place here in Cartagena. Look at this, if you want to be working on your foils like Biotherm needed to do, you can crane them out, bring them up to the pontoon, give them a little bit of a clean, give them a little bit of a sort out. It's, a, it's an ideal place for a quick pit stop. So next on the pontoon, Team Holson PRB. This is another boat that's really low. It's really light. I mean, we say light, light for an Amoka. It's a big beast and it needs to withstand a lot of pressure. But that coach roof, really low on Biotherm, and on Holson PRB, it's impossible to stand up tall. We're seeing the sailors doing all sorts of yoga moves on the deck just to try and get their back going. But have a look at the foil here. So this is, this is the magic, and it's pretty rare that we actually get a chance to look at it really, really close. They're actually doing a few little repairs here. You can see a little bit of uh, gel coat that they've just been adding on here. I'm just checking my fingers, yeah, and, I, and I've just smudged it. Sorry guys, I might have just left my fingerprint on that. But the shape of this foil compared with Biotherm, compared with Team Militia, radically different. This one, it's almost straight. From here to the water, it's almost straight. It's got a little curve in it, but it's mainly straight. So when it goes into the water, there's a lot of foil down underneath. On Biotherm, on Militia, they're really curved. So they grip into the water in a slightly different way. Again, just different philosophies for the teams. They've got multiple routes of access. It's got this nice big one at the back here. We've got these little ones in here, and that's where we see the sailors standing up and helming the boat out at sea. And look at that difference in that main sheet system here. Right at the back of the boom, there's only one system controlling. Then we get onto a real, this is a real fan favorite. Paprik Arquette, this is Johan Richon. Where's the hatch on this? It's really hidden away. This is a boat that once you get inside, you're in. And the hatch is there. It's that little black lip and you can slide it forward. It's the only route in and out of this boat. It's designed for one person. I mean, most of Mokka's are, but this was designed for Johan Rochon. It's how he wanted it for sailing around the world deep in that Southern Ocean. So the ergonomics have been designed to keep him in, safe, and it kind of out of the elements. But that goes further. The hull, the shape of it, we're starting to get onto boats that are looking larger and bigger and thicker. And the bow on this boat, whereas on Holson PRB, Biotherm, the deck, the bow deck, would be sort of concave. This one is convex. The water will hit it and it will drain off. There's a lot more volume here. 
This boat is quick when it's windy. It was built for the Southern Ocean. It was built for blasting downwind. And when we have had those conditions, it's been quick in this fleet as well. The trouble for Johan Rusholm and the rest of his team is he needs to find out how to make it quick in the light winds. Now the little chance to take a look at the foil and this foil, similar philosophy to Team Holson PRB. Flatter section here rather than those big curves that we're seeing on Biotherm and Team Militia. But just take a look at where it says Akea on the front there. There's a chine, there's a ridge, there's a, there's a corner and it runs right the way along. Because these boats are designed to go fast and really skim the waves, they've kind of got that surfboard built into them. When the wave hits, it, hopefully it kind of directs the worst of the spray down but also just lifts the bow up. Everything about these boats is built for that moment where the big winds come, the big waves come and you've got to deal with it. So this boat here has been in the hands of somebody that's been able to get the very best out of it, Thomas Rien. Now he has handed it over to Ambrosio Beccaria, but Thomas Rien is still on board. So there's a lovely little hand over there because you talk to any of these sailors, what really matters is not that the boat's fast, but that the sailor knows how to make it fast. That intellectual property is really valuable. All the little tuning notes that they have, all the little settings. So if you've picked up this boat, if you're Ambrosio Beccaria, you're thinking, where do I even start? Well, you get the guy that used to race it and race it well. You get Thomas Rial on board, and then he can share with you all that information. And it's a beautiful boat, somewhere in between what we saw with those really low down lightweight boats and Paprika Care. The bow is quite up. It's got quite a lot of volume on there. You can see the way it kind of rolls out to the side. But the cockpit here, smaller, less windage, less obstacle for that wind and the, the, the waves to kind of roll past. And it's quite open as well. Another foil here, which is using that straight section, but you can't quite tell. But actually when I get up close to it as well, it's got a really big curve. Just, just on this back section here, it's got a really big curve in it. All these designers, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make a, a foil that does everything well. In the light winds, it lifts out of the water. In the medium winds, it just barely disturbs the water, giving you a little bit of lift. And in the heavy winds, it's controllable and just lifting the whole boat up. Trouble is, you can't do all three. It is impossible to make a foil which is good at the medium and the extremes of the speed and the wind ranges. So maybe that's why it is a slightly different shape. It's got quite an aggressive curve on the elbow and at the tip. It's got a really clear sort of inflection just at, just at the top there. And that's a little interesting because when it's fully extended and down on the water, we're used to seeing that tip almost kind of out of the water is worth chasing. That little bit of a difference right there, just at the end. But it really does seem to be something that, well, they're staking their hopes on. I keep saying that each of these boats is a little bit different, but this one is really different. And going into the last edition of the race, they were so different that everyone was just saying, oh, it's too big, it's too heavy, it's too clunky, it's too boxy. They were nervous about it to the point where actually, at the start of the last round the world race, there was some discussion about, can we get a rule change? Can we take some equipment off? Can we change things? Because they wanted their boat to be lighter. But then they got on the race course and everyone was amazed at how well this boat did deal with the light winds, but also those heavy winds as well, smashing through the waves. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The, the boat, the hull, the deck is so high compared to the others. And that's all volume. If you dig that bow into the water, it's just gonna lift itself straight back up again. The other boats with those lower decks, when it digs in, it gets stuck in like a knife into the ground. And you take a look at the back here. There is so much superstructure and space. All of this back here is living quarters. And that means you're gonna sleep a bit better. You can stand up. I mean, not only can you stand up, actually you've got to stretch to touch the ceiling. It's been built around a philosophy of if I keep my sailors well rested, comfortable, it's bright, it's easy, it's pleasant to be in there, then they're gonna be able to concentrate more when I need them to. And they've been proved right. You've got that forward section for work, you've got that back section for living. Nobody else has anywhere near the level of comfort. Interestingly, actually, Francesca Klapcic, who did the last race on board 11th Hour uh, Racing Team, won the last race, she's been on board this thing, and she said it's amazing. Just the fact that you can stand up is incredible. There we have 
one of those big curvy foils. On the deck, just in front of the mast, they've got that big white box. That box has nothing inside it. There is no purpose for that box in terms of systems. There's no pulleys, there's no ropes, there's no hydraulics, no electronics. There's nothing in there, it's a void. The reason it's there is it goes back to what I was saying about them being a bit too heavy. The crew wanted to take some weight off their bulb, make the boat a little lighter, a little bit more springy. But there is a rule in Imoka. If you tipped your boat right the way upside down, so the keel was pointing in the air, the boat needs to be able to pull the keel to the side and then right itself. Well, if you take weight out of the bulb, when the bulb goes over, it's less effective to pull it over. So the only option they had was to put a big balloon on the deck. And there's a beautiful chance to pan from the beast that is Team Militia, the, 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 the weight, the colossal size, to the sleekness of Canada Ocean Racing Be Water Positive. And you should recognize this boat. This was 11th hour racing team. This boat in different people's hands has been so quick, it's been so fast. Now it's in the hands of Scott Scheuer and he's just fallen in love with it. His aim is to do the Vendée Globe in 2028 on this boat. And everything that we're seeing here with the Ocean Race Europe, the Ocean Race around the world, it's all about learning against the best in the world to try and find that speed. It's somewhere between the comfort that we saw with Team Militia, indeed, indeed, there's a little bit of space in there. And the reason that there's a bit of space and they're using that full width for the coach roof and everything, it's the only boat that has been designed specifically to house five people. Every other boat is a solo boat when it started its life and then there's been some modifications. Concave deck, trying to be light, trying to be low in the water. It is quick, there's something about this boat, they've got a winning formula, those little curves, those little edges. I mean, check out here, if you look at the bow here, compare this with Patrick Arcaire, how much the deck tumbles down to the water and how much of a flat bottom you have right up front, that, that surfboard approach to try and skip the water. But we said you can nosedive with that unless you have the volume and they do nosedive on board this boat. This boat is a really rough ride. Fast, speedy, but also pretty hectic. Flat section foils to really give you the lift. This boat's really, really quick. Scott Shaw has got to work it out. He's got to find that intellectual property that I was talking about. He's got to find the settings, but I'm sure he's going to be able to do it with Pip Hare, Brian Thompson. They've got an amazing lineup and each leg they've been getting better and better. One more Amoka to take a look at, Team Amala. And we've had to wait for another day because it is an older boat and it is slower. Certainly was slower on leg two. But there's an awful lot to love about this design. This was the old Hugo Boss launched in 2019. It was striking then and I think it's still striking now. The deck looks fantastic. This was one of the first boats to really embrace the fully enclosed cockpit. And inside, it is quite like a cave but there's one thing that has aged poorly, and that's the foils. You can see already that the foils on these boats are different. Normally, they'd be coming out towards us and sliding into the hull. But here, they come out through the bottom and they pierce their way out through the top. That was the old style, that was the old way of doing it, but there's a reason why it hurts. If you look here, you can see that what Alan Rohrer, the skipper of this boat, has done is he's extended the length of the foil, the, the cord of the foil, to try and give himself a little bit more wing area and a little bit more lift. But what it means is it won't actually fit inside the hull any more than this. So they're always out, or at least partly out. And that means in the light winds that we've been seeing in the Ocean Race Europe 2025, that's going to be a hindrance. You're not going to be able to pull those foils completely out of the way. The deck, really nice and low, really sleek. The boat looks fast, even though it's tied up to the dock, but those windows are really small. And inside, it's dark, the walls are black, and there's not a lot of space. The whole concept of the boat was that the previous skipper would be able to be tucked away in a chair, spring out with one step straight onto the winch, straight onto the controls. This is the boat that's probably the hardest to squeeze all five people on. It has its handicaps, absolutely, but it is in the hands of some pretty good sailors and some really enthusiastic youngsters as well. 
So there we have it, seven Amokas for the Ocean Race Europe 2025. Each of them different, some with some big advantages, others suffering some disadvantages. However, in the hands of some good sailors, each boat might find their leg to shine.